I happen to be <coughs> at a friend of mine's house, who's a poet, recently, and I was talking to her about how I was going to do a stage show of my solo album. The solo album's over there, and as I said before, I didn't put any sleeve notes in. So I was working with the director, and the director said to me, Karen, we need to know what the stories are behind each tune, because otherwise you're going to say, I'd like to do this, and we're going to go, why? <laughs> Does that relate to anything? You know? So I went away, and it ended up taking three weeks to write the sleeve notes. And the first tune, which is my mother's tune, was 14 pages long. And it's not everything that I think about while I'm playing my mother's tune, but it's all those very important things. And it became a completely cathartic experience about every single tune, why that tune was so important, what it, you know. And it became, <coughs> it became an autobiography without thinking about it. it and I, sometimes I just had to walk away from the computer because I'd be in tears because it would just bring up all sorts of memories. And then I stayed with this lady, Johan Mater's house, who's a poet up in Stroud. And uh, she brought some friends of hers who were over for a biographer's conference. Now that tickled me because I thought, what do you talk about at a biographer's concert? What have you spoken to recently, you know, and who you write about? Um, and I'm interested in biographies. I, 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 like, I like to know what happens behind all the scenes. And they said that biography is now used a lot um, helping people release trauma. So there is uh, this kind of move towards having the medical profession fund people who've been through whatever trauma, divorce or abuse or anything in their life to work with a, a biographer to write their own guided biography and then they can step back and read it as if it's somebody else's biography and they see it slightly differently and it's a, a letting go thing. And I found that really interesting because that's exactly how I felt about lots of things in my life, having written the sleeve notes so that, that I'm not going to publish this, alright. Um, you know, and you just let things go because you think, oh yeah, I don't feel like that now or whatever. But if you don't write it down, or you don't try to see it from another perspective, then it kind of stays with you all the time. It's that bit of resentment or bit of, you know, thing you can't let go of. So this guided biography thing is, I find, interesting. Anyway, so, I'm going to ask Peter McAlinden, who's here tonight, and was here last year um, at St Ives Festival, to play us a tune. Because Peter and I go back 30-odd years, I think, really. And Peter was one of the first people I ever learned a tune from, ever. <coughs> when I could hardly knew which end of the accordion, I mean, I still feel like that some mornings, but, you know, I didn't really know that well how to play an accordion. And a lot of the music you play in folk music is learned by ear. And people don't stop and do it nice and slowly for you, and there wasn't a computer to slow it down for you. They just keep playing and keep playing, you just have to sit there until you can kind of learn enough and remember enough to join in. So, Peter, would you like to come and play some tune?